Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me is Joe Payne, President and CEO of NASDAQ Listed Arcturus Therapeutics to discuss the latest with its COVID-19 therapy. And Joe, you were on with me back in May 4th, and it appears there is some new news with your COVID vaccine candidate. Provide us with an update and a reminder of the technology the vaccine is based on. Sure, look forward to it. And Jill, it's good to be with you, and thanks for the follow-up. Um, a lot's happened in the recent months. I think the most significant update is that we received approval to proceed into a phase one slash two clinical trial. Uh, we provided and submitted a clinical trial application to the Health Sciences Authority in Singapore. And thankfully it's been received well and we have approval to proceed. And that occurred uh, last month. And so we're, uh, uh, that's an exciting update as we advance our, our, our COVID-19 vaccine into the clinic. And Joe, remind us, what kind of technology is the vaccine predicated on? Sure, so the Arcturus vaccine is different. There's, there, there's 200 vaccines that are being tracked by the WHO and the RAPS, and uh, our vaccine is different from the others, and, and allow me to explain why. Uh, we're, we're not just a messenger RNA vaccine, we're a self-replicating messenger RNA vaccine that utilizes our lipid-mediated nanoparticle delivery technology called Lunar. So when you have this self-replicating mRNA and you combine it with a, this Lunar delivery technology, it has significant advantages. It means that the Arcturus vaccine is a potentially a, a low-dose vaccine, much smaller dose. So if less is, vaccine is injected, it means that it, it's potentially a safer vaccine, uh, less uh, injection site reactions, for example. And Joe, what was the reason that Israel selected Arcturus vaccine? Uh, well, we had a, a great experience with the Israeli Ministry of Health uh, through the selection process. We met with the scientific team and also a finance team. And the scientific team was attracted to the uh, the data that we've been that we've collected in preclinical animal studies that suggests that our dose is lower, which means that it's potentially a safer uh, vaccine uh, because the dose is is less. But also uh, because our vaccine is more immunogenic with respect to cellular immunity, this means that this vaccine could work in a larger percentage of the population, and the durability of the vaccine could be impacted. It could last longer. So that's the feedback we got from the scientific team, the PhDs, the MDs, the professors in the Israeli Ministry of Health, and just a very thorough process there. Uh, when we met with the finance group, they were attracted to one thing, which is the budget. And so even though the price point for our vaccine is, is maybe higher than other vaccines, we actually save countries and their taxpayers substantial amounts of money because our vaccine is a, a potentially a single administration. And you can imagine the significant costs and savings associated with limiting the vaccine dosing regimen to a single shot rather than bringing everybody back in for a booster shot a few weeks later or a month later and all the costs associated with that. And besides Singapore, you also announced an agreement with the Israeli Minister of Health to supply the COVID-19 vaccine. Yes, that's correct. We have uh, recently um, engaged in a binding term sheet or binding a, a term sheet agreement with, with the Israeli Ministry of Health to help in their, assist them in their vaccination strategy. Um, and uh, they, is, the country of Israel is approximately nine or 10 million people. And we are fortunate to be one of their, uh, the vaccines to help them in their effort to vaccinate their citizens. So Joe, realistically, as we look at the other side of this, is it, the, is it Q4 2020, the first half of 2021, where it's more widely available globally? Well, we have uh, contracted relationships with Singapore and it, Israel, and, and we'll likely engage in uh, additional supply agreements with additional countries. Uh, with respect to the timing of distribution, it does depend upon the regulatory agencies of these countries. Ultimately, it's their decision. The first phase will be an emergency use authorization, and it will be dependent upon data that we're collecting in phase one slash two, upcoming here shortly in the next couple of weeks and months. Uh, 
to what extent and to what data we need to collect for a phase three or a registrational study is being discussed with multiple regulatory agencies, as you can appreciate. Uh, with respect to general population, I think it's reasonable, you know, at the end of this year or uh, uh, into the next is, is a reasonable expectation. But again, it's difficult for Arcturus to give tight messaging around that the timelines because those decisions ultimately rest on the regulatory agencies that we're working with. All right, Joe, great to see you. Thanks so much for the update. Great, thank you. And thanks for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Great.